This is the Kratos Heavy Assault Tank. It's a new kit out from Games Workshop, part of their Horus Heresy game. When I first saw this kit advertised, I was like, I gotta have this. Um, it's just too cool looking. So I'm really excited about uh, painting and, and weathering this. Now to make the painting and weathering process a little easier, I've got the, the vehicle broken down in these parts. I, these side guns come off very easy. So uh, I'm keeping them off for a lot of this. Uh, the two figures that I've got, the kit only comes with one, but I found a spare and I'm gonna use him up here. And I've got the head from uh, the kit itself, so it'll be somewhat consistent. I've got their hatches. Um, this big plow blade is gonna be separate. And uh, the exhausts, I've got those separate. And I've left the turret uh, loose, so that'll be easy to deal with. I'm going to start off using Citadel's Lupercal Green, uh, which is a very emerald kind of green color, a dark emerald green color. Now I thinned it down, as you can see, quite heavily with water because I want it to go on fairly smooth. But if it leaves just a little bit of texture, that's okay. And I'm just going to use this big Artist Opus brush to get this on here. There will be a few areas that are a little more difficult to get to with the large brush. So what I do is I just wait till I get a few layers of paint on and identify those. And then I just get a regular old paint brush and go in and just touch up those areas. Quite often when I'm painting a model that's broken into a lot of component parts like this, I forget to paint all the little component parts. So if you're using a method like this, don't forget to paint everything else. By the way, this technique I'm using, if you're wondering why I'm using it, um, there's a, a creator on YouTube named Richard Gray who does some fabulous, just amazing uh, Warhammer uh, painting. And uh, I saw him doing this type of technique, this stippling on thin paint like this. Now, he didn't do it on as big a vehicle as this, and this might be a little overly ambitious to try, but I thought... How better to learn a new technique than to do it on something big so I get plenty of opportunity to try it. But anyway, check out his channel if you've not already done so. One other, I guess you'd say, break-in thought that I just had as I work on this is if there are parts that are more splotchy, especially lower down on the model, um, parts that are in shadow, I'm okay with that. That's why I primed it in black. Um, because I want this to be, you know, I want it to represent a military vehicle that's seen combat. So if the paint looks distressed, if the paint looks uh, worn, um, chipped, faded, that kind of thing, then I'm okay with that. That's just kind of accomplishing what I want. All right, I've got that Looper Cal Green on, and uh, I like that color. It's pretty nice. It took me about three coats. Uh, I think total time was maybe an hour of painting, so it wasn't bad at all. Yeah, I could have done that with an airbrush, but I just like uh, I just like doing this method. It's a lot of fun. So um, on to the next color. Now what I've got in my palette now is a 50/50 mix of Lupercal Green and Citadel's Sons of Horus Green. Um, it's going to be building up the color from this darker green. Uh, eventually getting up to a more modulated look and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this smaller dry brush this is a medium series D from Artis Opus what I'm going to do is I'm going to be a little more careful with my application now the paint is still very thin I thinned it about 50 50 with water and what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin applying it into the open areas like this, especially the upturned surfaces and uh, along maybe three quarters of a way down the sides. But I'm going to leave a little bit of the Lupercal green showing even on the top 
not a lot. I'm not going to try and be super precise about it. But just, I guess, one way you could term it is to give it just a little bit of appreciated effect. What I'm really going for is a distressed look uh, for the paint uh, because it's going to be, you know, faded and worn and things like that. So that's what I'm trying to really achieve is kind of a distressed look. But it also just adds volume and depth to the model. If you're doing this, you build it up like you like. You'll know when it's right when you look at it and go, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So I've just got an idea in mind, a picture in my head of how I want it to look. And I'm trying to get it as close as I can to that. One thing I've noticed is that over the years, the picture in my mind is always better than what I'm able to actually do. But that's okay, because that's why I say ultimately you have to focus on the fun. Because that's what modeling is all about. Whenever I've mixed two paints together, I periodically stir them in my palette because there's actually a, quite a variety of pigments in there and sometimes they don't stay together real well so occasionally just go in there and stir it up. And part of what I'm trying to achieve as I've talked about a little bit is somewhat of a modulated look. And if you not sure what modulation is. If I remember, there will be a video link up here in the corner that you can look at a video that I did talking about that. But the way I can achieve that to some degree on the sides here is making sure that I only take the paint maybe that far down. Just kind of pick an arbitrary line and that's where I'm going to let it get darker. Once this paint dries, it's going to be much more translucent and it's going to be a little more of a of a appropriate transition between the two colors. It won't be quite so stark. But that just suggests shadow and light and things like that. And I just think about as I'm going over the model just think about where would shadow and light fall and then what are some of the volumes some of the some of the features on the model that I want to stand out like I look up under here I'm gonna stop right about there I'm not gonna get right up under that because that's gonna be in shadow same way with underneath here Now you don't have to be strict about your light interpretation that's not what modulation is about but it's just a way of enhancing the shape, the features of the vehicle in a way that will just help it seem bigger than it actually is. I'm going to break my rule and I'm going to put just a little bit on each of those just because I think it's going to look good to do so. Just experiment with it. If you don't like it, you can always go back over with the base color. And do it again. That's the beauty of painting. The next color I'm going to use is Sons of Horse Green right from the bottle. I've thinned it about 50-50 with uh, water. And I'm going to continue that process of just doing something close to modulation. Not pure modulation, but I'll just be putting it more in the center of panels, um, leaving some of the previous colors. Uh, not, you know, I'm not going to be picky about it. If it's smaller areas like this and I overlap it a little bit, that's fine. But what I'm looking for is just a little bit of a texture. You can already see it developing right along here if you look. You can see that patchiness coming through and that's exactly what I'm going for. So that's already beginning to develop. I'm also going to be more deliberate about focusing this on the upper surfaces and the more prominent surfaces on the side, but the more recessed areas or the areas that are in deeper shadow, I'm going to leave this off. I'm not going to put those there, so it'll help develop those volumes and things. I'm just going to begin adding this on like this. and I'll do it in a couple of coats, depending on how it looks. I'm looking for a certain level of patchiness. So if one coat 
gets the look that I want. Um, and I'll go with that. It looks a little horrible when you first put it on, I'll admit. But as it dries, it gets more subtle. Now you could put in enough coats of this that you get complete opaque coverage. And you don't get any of that patchiness. So if you don't want that, um, you can continue using this. This is a great application method. If you don't have an airbrush, or even if you do, um, I think it's a very fun method. Now I've added Citadel Sybarite Green into that Sons of Horus Green. And I'm going to use this just on the upturned surfaces like right up here for kind of a really bright pop. Now keep in mind as you're watching this that it's going to dry uh, not quite as bright as it looks right now, but this is going to be just a very restrained application on the most upturned surfaces. Again, just to create some volume and a distressed looking paint job. Now the ratio of paint, I'm not quite sure the exact ratio. I just kept putting in small brushfuls into what I already had in my palette until I got the color that I thought looked about right. It's probably, <laughs> if I had to guess, it's probably about two parts Sons of Horus Green and maybe one and a half parts of the Sybarite Green. This is just one of those areas where you put it in until you think it looks good. I would say, if you're not sure and you're trying this method, then put in less than you think you're going to need and apply it. And if it doesn't quite get the effect that you want, add just a little bit more of the Sybarite Green. It's always easier to do a little less than to have too much. All right, that might seem like a little bit of a long and convoluted process, but um, I like the way it turned out. So um, it's just a way of building up the colors, emphasizing the volumes. Um, I could have done this with an airbrush. Uh, it would have had a different effect, a different look on the surface, but there would have still been that kind of modulated look to it. Uh, but this is the reason I like doing this is it's just fun. I just really enjoy this process of brush painting this way. So um, if you if you like the look of it, give it a shot. Now, if you, if you look at this and you go, I, I totally hate that. That, that. that doesn't look good to me. That's fine. Um, there are a lot of application techniques, a lot of methods. This is a very stylistic approach. I'll admit that. So, uh, you know, if it's not your favorite, that's okay. Uh, just keep watching. There, there, there will be other things to come along, I, I can assure you. But next, I want to just start popping out some of these edges and really starting to define the shapes. Now, with all this use of dry brushes, I haven't done actually any proper dry brushing yet, so I'm going to use this really big dry brush here. And what I've got now is this is just straight Sybarite green that I've got in my palette. And I've thinned it down with just a little bit of water just a very, very little bit to just make it go a little smoother. And I'm going to work most of this off onto my texture palette here. I like the texture palette. Unlike paper towels, the texture palette removes paint, but not necessarily moisture. And uh, I think it works a little better. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to start very gently focusing on the edges to bring those out. I'm not doing a, I guess you'd say a willy-nilly <laughs> kind of dry brush, but a fairly focused one. There are quite a few elements on the model that are painted black. Uh, some of them are going to be decorative. Uh, if you look at the box art, there's actually two schemes shown. Um, and from what I understand, it's fairly optional how you paint those decorative elements. So I'm going to use the box art as just some inspiration, do kind of a simplified version of that. I'm also going to paint the parts that are going to be silver. I'm going to base those in black so that when I paint the silver over it, it will go over a, a unified color. I'm going to start by painting the areas that are easy to define, these large blocks of areas, so that I don't have to worry about uh, painting stripes carefully or anything like that. I'm going to use Vallejo Black Gray for this. 
I've thinned it down with a little water and we'll be putting it on in, of course, multiple thin coats. Now I want to switch to Vallejo Dark Gray. I've thinned it down. It's about two parts water, one part paint. And I'm just going to use that same method I did earlier. We're just kind of stippling on a very patchy coat to just give the paint a distressed look. There's going to be some bubbles when you do that. Don't worry about it. They'll pop as they dry. I'm going to use Citadel's Administratum Gray to dry brush along the edges, being sure to hit the bolt detail and things like that. Now for areas that are a little more difficult to get to with the dry brushing, like around these panel lines, I'm just going to thin down some of that Administratum Gray with water. I'm just going to do a traditional edge highlight there. Now when I get to the chipping part of uh, the weathering, I can go in and make this look a little scruffier so that it will blend in a little better. I'm also going to take this opportunity, while I've got this loaded on my brush, to go in and just touch all the bolts on these black areas, like that. Now there are quite a few areas of silver and bronze or gold detail, I think it's bronze, on the model. What I'd recommend is that you look at the box art, see what that is. Remember that in most cases with Citadel models, with Games Workshop models, the box art is a recommendation. It's not absolute. I mean, certain colors are canon, of course, and things like that, but a lot of it is just like the, you know, you buy a box of food and it says serving suggestion on the front. It's kind of like that. So some of them, like the gun barrels and things, you know they're going to be silver. But other pieces, like you'll see that they've got these little details here, painted silver, and a few other little areas, the little round areas around all of the, the road wheels. Those are painted silver. And I'm just using lead belcher for this. So I would say, what I'm well, what I'm going to do, is I'm just going to paint the things that I think need to be silver or bronze and uh, use their guide as a kind of suggestion. But if I see something that I don't want to paint or that I do want to paint, well, that's what I'm going to do. So there's quite a bit on here that you can paint, so make it as blingy as you want. Now to continue with the metallics, I'm going to paint some of the elements on the guns with this Balthazar gold from Citadel. It's kind of a bronzy color and uh, looks really nice. And again, as with much of the other uh, elements on the model, it really comes down to what you want to paint where. Now I looked at the box art to get some ideas of what they had done on there, what I liked, what I maybe didn't like, and uh, so I want to pretty much follow closely to that. You just put this on wherever you think it looks like it should go. Now for base painting the tracks, I'm going to use what may seem at first to be an unusual color. This is Citadel Steel, Steel Legion Drab. Can't speak early this morning. <laughs> Steel Legion Drab. Now it's a brownish drab color. And the reason I'm not using, most of the time you see uh, quite often you'll see uh, Games Workshop kits being painted with lead belcher. They'll start off silver. But while these tracks would be metal and factory fresh, they would be very likely silver. It um, doesn't take too long of riding around and everything from dust to mud to rust and everything else is going to get on them. So the Steel Legion Drab is going to be just kind of a, a base for everything that's to come. In the second video of this series, I'll be weathering these tracks. And I think when I do that, it'll make much more sense why I chose this color first. Now this will take a little while, and to get up under here and up under there, I'll need to be very careful in doing that. I'm also going to be painting the edges of the tracks all the way around and on the lower parts 
I need to get my brush right up under there just to get along the edge of them. Now I probably won't paint the bottom of the tracks where it sits on it just because, well, that won't be seen. But all of these areas that are visible, I'm going to make sure to paint these. I thinned it down a little bit with water so it will take a couple of thin coats. But I wouldn't be too worried about getting complete coverage because we're going to be putting so much stuff over this that eventually most of this color is going to be hidden. I'm going to base paint these wires on these side guns first with corn red. Now I'll give them just a little bit of a highlight with Citadel's Evil Sun Scarlet. Just running that right along the top edge of each little wire. All right, I think I'll call this a video. I have all of the base colors on. Um, I think it's looking pretty good so far. I'm happy with the effect that I got from all of that stippling. Uh, this is pretty much the effect that I was going for. I'm really happy with this kit. This kit was a lot of fun to build. It's proving to be a huge amount of fun to paint. Uh, in the next video, I'm really, really looking forward to the weathering of this kit because I plan to uh, really get it kind of grimy and chipped up. Um, maybe not overdone, but certainly very, very used. So uh, be sure and hit the subscribe link down there. How do you like that segue? Uh, so you'll know when I have a new video come out. Hit the little bell. It'll, it'll keep you posted when I have one. I'd also be grateful if you would uh, uh, click the like button down below and drop a comment. Uh, one, it helps me grow the channel, but two, it also just lets me know that you enjoy the video and let me know what you think of it, and uh, I'd be most grateful for that. Now, if you're looking at this and wondering, hey, wait a minute, when did he paint the figures? Um, that's actually uh, some additional content that I did, a, another video, a short video that I did that is on Patreon. Um, I do uh, videos for patrons uh, once or twice a week, in addition to the YouTube videos that may be bonus content for the work that I do here on the channel. Uh, it may be additional content for other genres. Uh, so uh, there's there's always something going to be coming out on Patreon for those subscribers. So if you would like to support the channel and if you would like additional content each week from me, uh, then please be sure and click the link down below to Patreon and uh, check out what, what is available. And if you're already a Patreon subscriber, thank you so much for the support that you give me and ultimately uh, to my family. Uh, that's, that's really what it's all about, is this is supporting me and my family, allowing me to do this uh, and, and get, the, you know, using the materials and the kits and all of the things that it takes to get this done. So thank you, Patreon supporters, for your support. With all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.